For those just joining us at home, we are currently exploring the shallowest summit of unnamed seamount G. Looks like we just found something here. Yeah, I think this is a, a sponge called Saca Calyx. Zoom in on that thing, please. Yep. So this is a Saca Calyx. This is another type of stocked euplectalid sponge. It kind of looks like a little loofah on a stick. You know, a little shower loofah thing. Very cool. I don't know if we've seen one of those yet today, so it's good to get a zoom of that. It had an associate on it, a crinoid, a feather star. What's that in the water column? It's like a... There's something floating there, but it's gone now. Got some more Aritogorgia, some more large bamboo corals, Jasoniasis. Some Faria sponges, Bathopathies, Chrysogorgia. Yeah, it's a pretty nice community up here. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, what now? Okay, well, it looks like we're, we're at a good right place. there in the yeah. middle. We're at a good place to collect a rock. Collect a rock? We can collect a rock, absolutely. I don't think we can get any more summity than the summit. Do you um like do you want to make sure we cover this all around the edges? Before we collect the rock? Or No, no, no. I just mean in general. Sure. Yeah, yeah, we can uh we could just meander. Use the track to kind of make it clear that we saw everything, make Steve happy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Alright, well before we head south, I'll head north. Do one more little pass on this side of it. Yeah, if we can get we can the do our rock. side and we could do these guys then at some point. All right. Put off the, the downward trek for a while. You can make okay. note for your rock shopping. You can shop for the best rock. Fish. Oh, there's a fish. Where? Over our left hand left. side, just went off screen. Left hand side. Yeah. Hello, fish. Wow, there he is. Okay, zoom on the fish, please. So this is a cuskeel. Oh, thank you, fish. Now we can see you a little bit better. So the cuskeels are in the gadiformes, or not the gadiformes, I mean the ophidiaformes. And that one, I'm going to look through the guide for uh, a good match. Now that's sort of a rounded face. Mm -hmm. It's right there. There it is. This is the summit. This is it. Sure of it. So it's sure I'm going to drop another target. Nice. X marks the spot. This is it. And it has coral. So maybe this is the rock. I was wrong. Or. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know, because there's always, like, you know, the further rock. Right at the top of this beautiful rock, we have another, a number of wonderful animals. We've got an unbranched bamboo coral. We've got Jasoniasis, nodally branching guy? bamboo corals. Oh, yeah, we got a nice big crab. 
Looks like a, a lithoted crab. This one is likely Paralomus. So they're related to the king crabs. Cool. They have those really long legs. Thank you. Got some uh, bathopathies, some stickopathies, ritogorgia. Oh, there's star. a cute little star. Let's take a look at that cute star. Sure thing. Looks like a sticker. It oh, looks like a sticker. Star, That's how you know you did a good job. <laughs> you get a little star. Was oh, that a cookie? Cookie, whatever. Yes, it is a cookie star. So this is a star in the family Goniasterity, which is known as the cookie stars. Um, I think that name comes from, because they look exactly like uh, if you used a cookie cutter to cut out a star shape. They're always this really nice star shape. That's our badge for reaching the summit. <laughs> you get a cookie star. Cookie star badge. Oh, and here's another one of these really cool Rodana Ritogorgia. We sampled this yesterday on the seamount. And let's take a look at uh, that squat lobster. Okay. Okay, zoom in the lobster, please. The non-lobster lobster. lobster. <laughs> Is there two? Yeah, there's two. They must be friends. Or not. I don't know. I, I shouldn't assume their relationship. Why are they on the dead one? That's a good question. I, uh, I'm not sure. So, this uh, it's not dead. Uh, well, it's a dead part of the... Rodana Ritogorgia skeleton that's been overgrown by a uh, hydroid. So this is a hydroid that these squat lobsters are hanging out in. Um, maybe they just like that. It Maybe it's not as uh, itchy. I don't know. <laughs> well... Are we rock shopping? Rock, 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 rock. Yeah, let's see if there's anyone that we can get. It's holiday this season. Make sure you get the right rock for every occasion. There's always a rock for a geologist. You gotta pick out good ones. Gotta make those geologists happy. Yeah, those squat lobsters uh, in our guide, we've only identified them to uh, long arm spiny. They're just a uh, squat lobster, long arm spiny. Because they have long arms and they're spiny. We don't we don't know what those are. Any of these uh, rocks look like the happy one? Um, okay, let's see. What about this one? Sure. Gotta find one not too big, not too small, just enough crust. Yeah. That's the hope. Well, we know that they're loose. Yeah. After the rock looseness test there. Can you circle which one you want again, please? That oh, one. okay. Hmm. 
Crash. It's loose. It's not. And let's take a look at this one before we put it away. Go ahead and zoom in, Aaron. That looks awesome. All right, it's got the geology stamp of approval. Let's Geo put it in starboard freedom. I don't know, F. Freedom. <laughs> Starboard fail. Sample salvo, please. Oh, that was helpful. <laughs> Maybe hit launch and recover there. Okay, box out, please. Oops. Oops, please. How about that? Okay, box in. Okay, and then we can collect a Niskin. Okay. What's our sample number? That one was 047. 047, roger. Okay, can hit the dive salvo. Oops. Um, you have six, six open. Six, okay. The last battle. Oops. Sorry? Come on. Can I, like, iris open? Is that possible? Thank you. What am I doing? Oh, come on. I'm sorry? Oh, no. I was really struggling. Nice. Okay. That was our final water rock pairing, and that sample was 048. Roger, 048.
Uh, as we continue to cruise around, we've got a question from the chat. Uh, what makes uh, like the best spot for a coral or sponge to make its home? How do they determine what's going to be good? Well, just like all of us, uh, when we are choosing a home, uh, we want a place that's nice and conveniently located to food. Um, we also want to choose a place that isn't going to be, you know, covered in sediment either. You know, you don't, no one wants to be buried. Fortunately, both of those things go hand in hand. If you have strong currents, you're going to have more food. And strong currents will also take away any sediment that might, you know, gunk up your branches if you're a coral. Can we take a look at this Paragorgia? Mm -hmm. Always got time for a Paragorgia. So that is a bumblegum coral. Zoom in, please. They call it bumblegum coral because at the ends of the branches, as we zoom in, you'll see that there are like these little, little balls of polyps all clustered together, kind of look like bubble gum. And it's also kind of the color of bubble gum. And in the branches, we have a snake star. It's quite common to see these snake stars in the branches of uh, Paragorgia. And, and often we see them in Hemichorallium as well, and uh, almost always on Plexoric corals. Fish. Oh, yeah, that might be the same fish we were seeing earlier. A so, yeah. It's following us. Or are we following it? Mm, age old question. Yeah, let's take a look at the sea cucumber over there. Uh, see how big it we is. might be able to get there. Let's see. I'll try my darndest. Let's zoom in from here. Is that worth getting closer for? Um, maybe. Okay, uh, come wide, please. So we need south move? Uh, even if we just wait for it to go east, we should get there. Okay. I think. I'm just trying to see like how uh, how firm this uh, cucumber might be. If we get close enough to it, maybe just a little bit of thruster wash can give us some information. Sometimes a uh, these sea cucumbers are really fragile when we bring them up, so they're really hard to preserve. But if this one looks like it could uh, stay intact on the way to the surface, it could be a good candidate. All right, let's do a zoom on this one, please. And we got looks the like, lasers there. Looks like, like, like chicken. <laughs> <laughs> it looks more like a tongue to me. Oh, that's mm -hmm. a good, good call. Yeah. What do you think? A little over uh, ten centimeters. I think maybe twenty centimeters. That's a that's a decent size. Yeah. Yeah. Let's uh let's pick this guy up. Okay, come wide, please. We can put it in the basket with the other cucumber. So I think that's B. Yep. Bio box B is open. Well, it has stuff in it, but I think it'll fit. Yeah, but the other the other stuff is not. So just grab it. Just grab it. If we slurp it, it's probably gonna shred. 
Sorry, I mean, uh, yeah, never mind. Yeah, okay. Oh, I guess, yeah, I guess that's up for uh, whoever's manipulating how they feel. Sometimes they use the slurp to lift things. Is there a specific end you want us to grab it on? Like this. Um, just sort of uh, maybe scoop it uh, up from the middle, and scoop in the middle. Yeah, that's how I'd probably go about it. Do you want me to zoom in, and snow? Nice. Perfect. Ready for box out? Yeah, sorry, hold on. Yeah, messing this up. Which side? Bio box B, beta. Right side. Right side. Uh. Whoa. Kind of cool though, we can see its mouth. Or is that a mouth? Yes, that's its mouth. Mouth parts. Mouth parts. Yeah, so it has these little little uh, feeding hands that'll come out, but right now, oh no. Oh no. What's, what's happening? He's pooping. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. But I didn't want it to poop because that's what we wanted from, from this uh, sample. How would you guarantee he wouldn't poop on the way up? Um, you can't really guarantee that. So do we want to capture this guy still? Um, maybe we'll find another one. Okay. He, this, uh, this little one has, uh, definitely... Let him go free? Yeah. yeah I'll, I'll shake him off. But that was cool. Now we know how... See cucumbers poop? Hey, stop that. Yep. Go away, please. It'll it'll start swimming. Hopefully, Bye. maybe. Eh. Bye. Bye. Oh, yep, see there he goes. Sort of doing the sea cucumber flap. More poop. There we go. Yeah, I think that when they get picked up. If, it, if they're in the air a little bit too long, uh, that encourages them to poop. You'll see them uh, do that before they take off for a swim. Would it poop in the bio box, though? It could. It could poop in the bio box, but it might feel safe in there. We've also got those boxes. You can save all the poop. Um, it becomes more difficult uh, for the study uh, to to do that. It's outside. Yeah, it could become contaminated. Is that the same one? I think that might be a slightly different one. Let's take a zoom on it. Sure, I'll get up over there. Yeah, if it's the one that has the the purple head, I don't think we want that one. But okay, zoom in, please. Looks like a purple some one. Of yeah, them. yeah, this one's really, really gelatinous. So right. I don't know Come if on. it's a good ca candidate. It's a Hansen Athuria.
Got a kiddo in the chat asking the famous question, what kind of starfish was Patrick from SpongeBob? I think there's far too many possibilities on that one. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of possibilities of what kind of star Patrick could be. But um, recently there was spotted over in the Atlantic a yellow sponge that was very square shaped um, sitting next to a pink sea star. And that image has become quite famous as the real life Patrick and uh, SpongeBob. No way. Yeah. That's it, crazy. It was trending on Twitter and, and social media for a while. This actually feels kind of familiar. When was that? Oh, oh, that was this summer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, I love that. When life imitates art. <laughs> I was I was looking that one up, and there's another another. Uh, it was in an aquarium. A, a Patrick-like starfish was spotted, but neither of the articles that I saw had any identification. I mean, based on the show, I would assume that um, SpongeBob and Patrick don't live in the deep sea. Uh, they live in a shallower reef environment, um, just based on the diversity and types of fish that live in their community. <laughs> and, and a fact that the the squirrel can scuba dive um, down to those depths is definitely a good indicator that it might be shallower. Otherwise, she would have to use uh, a submarine or something. That's a pretty good uh, traverse of the, the northern part of what's shown up at the summit. Do you want to step south, make sure we get some coverage? Do you want to get going? What's your what's your thoughts? Um, I think, yeah, let's go south. And then um, once we hit that south end, we can try for the southernmost summit, if that's yep. doable. All right, so let's do, um, I'll do a 30-meter step, explore a bit, and then see where we are. Cool? Cool. Good plan. Bridge nav. Can we get a three zero meter step bearing one eight zero? Another gorgeous Aritagorgia. You might say it's Aritagorgias. Oh. <laughs> and we got some Rodan Aritagorgia. Some Stichopathies. Perea. Saw some mushroom corals. And I think uh, we might spot some more sea cucumbers as we go over these rocky areas. If we're lucky. Let's find the biggest one we can. It'd be cool if we saw nice big cycropodes. Those ones are some of my favorites. They've got these long uh, tails. Makes them look like, kind of like squirrels. They come in a couple colors, either like deep purple or, or bright yellow. So uh, I haven't seen a bright yellow one in this area, but the deep purple ones are definitely about. A good petty agony would be happy too. That's the, the same type as the one that we collected the other day. And that, that one held up really well um, when we had it in the lab. So those ones are pretty good.
We also got some more comments in the science chat that plankton probably wouldn't be doing so well in the deep sea. And Mrs. Puff probably wouldn't have a driving school in the deep ocean. Um, why wouldn't she have a driving school? I don't know. Maybe we should ask the <laughs> biologist. I don't know. <laughs> it's too dark. It's too dark of to course. drive. Yes, it's too uh, dark to see anything. I mean, but <laughs> you would have headlights True. on your car. Do they, though? It is pretty light, and now that I think about it. The show, at least. It just says he lives in a pineapple. Oh, well, and also he lives in a pineapple. And don't do well in the pressure. Ah. Uh. Oh yeah, yeah. Tire, tires would uh, well, you'd have to inflate them with something else. But SpongeBob could live in Hawaii because we do have lots of pineapples around here. And actually, from an artist's perspective, um, we do uh, do research and uh, study reality in order to base um, base our uh, cartoons and our media on. So I'm sure that the people who created uh, SpongeBob could tell you like some of the answers to to those questions. I'm sure they looked at like several different starfish, looked at um, what would be alive in what areas, and. Of course, added some fantastical elements to it. Actually, this is actually interesting, um, just looking at the intersection of uh, careers. Um, the creator of SpongeBob, uh, Stephen Hillenberg, uh, was a marine science educator. So there you go. Oh, you could have been sitting in your seat. Could have been sitting right here. So that just goes to show that it, uh, whatever career path you take, you, you never know where you're going to end up and how those skills are going to be useful in, uh, in multiple different uh, jobs that you might have. Where did he go to school? Um, give me a second. Let's see, it looked like he instructed at Orange County Marine Institute. All right, looks like we're running out of fun on this seamount. Let's do another move. No more fun. We're still moving a little bit, but let's plan our next move. There's still plenty of fun to have. No more fun. No more fun. No fun allowed. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no.
Um, there is something right below us. But if we can't go back, that's We okay. can go back. We okay. are waiting. Yeah, what, what's this? Oh, the little squishy little yeah, thing. Yeah, the little squishy looking thing. Okay, I guess I we're landing. It, it could be a cucumber, or it could be nothing. Zoom in, please. It's never nothing. <laughs> oh, it's a cucumber? Certainly jiggly. It's very jiggly. I think it might be too jiggly. It's very jiggly. It's also sand colored. What is it? Yeah, yeah. That's a sand colored jiggly. Sand colored jiggly. Sand col oh, you heard it, heard it here first. Okay, well. Uh, interesting. Yeah, it just looked weird to me. It looks weird still. It still looks weird. Yeah, definitely. Definitely weird. All right. But likely a holotherian. But too jiggly for us. Choose your adventure. Going right there. Let's do another step first. Okay. Just for fun. Just south? Yeah. Bridge nav, can we get a five zero meter step one eight zero? Can we zoom in right here? Yep. At least keep the momentum up anyway. Maybe. Go ahead and zoom in, please. Okay. That's the least useful view ever. How about that? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it might be a Clyptophora. Um, has sort of lyrate branching, but half of that uh, coral is is missing. All right, come wide, please. I think that's the the first one of those we've seen today. It's not full colony, but a good view. Nice long stick of pathies. What's this big bushy bit? Oh wow, yeah, that is a bathy pathies. That's a that big a one. Big one, yeah. Yeah. Wow, that is a big one. And it's on a very small rock. Not long for this world to see if there's any associates. I see a star. Oh, yeah. It looks like there's a branch kind of just sticking out from the other end. Zoom, please. That's weird. Yeah, right there. Yeah. That's what is happening that's there? That's very strange. That doesn't usually happen. Oh, and that might be a squall lobster, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. See, it's really bright pink. Oh, look at that. Or a crab? I don't know. Anything. Yeah, that is a squall lobster. Cool. Weird that it branched. It's cool. Yeah, it's it, yeah, it's really interesting. Um, it could be that it got damaged there, and then a branch started growing from that location. Uh, but it definitely looks a little awkward, don't you think? Maybe they always branch, but they never get big enough that we notice. I mean, it's not unheard of. Um, Tina Molotsova, the PP Shursov Institute in Russia, has told me that um, bathypathies can branch, so that might be what's happening there. There's a pancake urchin. Can we take a look at this? And we can look at that star, too. OK, zoom in, please. Uh, 
Okay. Yeah, so this is a nodally branching bamboo coral with all of its polyps closed. So this is likely a Jason Isis. That star was just to the left here? Yeah, and there's a orange star. Where are you? Come wide a little bit. There it is. It could be a brittle star. Okay, zoom in there. Yep, a brittle star in the family Ophiocanthidae has those long uh, spines along the arms. Okay, thank you. And it's on the move. Probably looking for a new coral to hang out in. Good thing it has lots of options up here at the top of this seamount. Oh, here's a new Aritagorgia. This is Aritagorgia bella. Has all of the whorls concentrated near the top. T more tight whirling than the Aritagorgia magna spiralis. So we're going to be going down slope for a while. Okay. Um, so that's going to be pretty lame. Can we just do it fast? Yeah, we can do it fast. Rip the band-aid off. How far is it? Uh, oh my gosh, it's so far. Is it really? Oh yeah, like 600 meters. Oh wow. Yeah. Lame. That's just to get to the bottom and then... Actually, I think that was to there. What's that little nugget? This is a spike in the data. Data spike. Not real. Fake spike. Fake spike. To so that little plateau, it's four hundred meters. Okay. Cool. Do you just you want to shoot south, or do you want to go? We're doesn't headed generally that way. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay. Probably direct. Okay. Let's take a look at this. I think it might be a black coral called uh, teleopathies. It's related to those bathopathies. All this right, is a really the, tall one. Let's look at that little branching node, not node, other word, branching area. little associate yeah I think that might be um, sort of the exoskeleton of a brittle star or, or something just like uh, some schmutz no longer alive Gorgeous. That's definitely the tallest teleopathies I've seen. Okay, it's gonna be very much two one zero, and when you say fast, you want like big steps, and you're just gonna go crazy. Sure. All right, it's like hundred meters. Sure. All right. Half knot. Whoa! Making my belly hurt a little bit. All right. <laughs> Yeah, that seems a little fast. That makes me nervous. <laughs> well, I mean, we're not going to see anything, so I just want to want to okay. go to where we can see stuff. Fair Bridge enough. Yeah, we we do want to move, but yeah, we can see some snap zooms, but it's really hard to sample or stop or. Get um, can good we video get on a, a one zero zero meter move bearing two two zero eight at zero point five knots? Sure. 
Sure. One zero zero meter move, bearing two zero eight zero point five knots. Got some positivity in the chat saying that, that they that they bet the ridge is going to be pretty interesting. I agree. Everything's interesting under the sea, right? Okay, here we go. All right. Everything sure is interesting. It also depends on who you ask. Everybody has their favorite thing that they like to look at, want to study. So we are getting ready to move towards the uh, the second summit of this seamount. And we're going to move quite quickly because there's a little bit of a dip down slope. I love when we say we're going to move quickly and then we're just like, staring at the screen <laughs> yeah like, well, I mean, ROV it takes, world quickly <laughs> yeah it, it takes a little while to get going you know it does, it does. but it's yeah. always i feel like we always say that and then the, anyone watching is just staring at the They're same like, spot it's not for fast. 30 minutes <laughs> like, then all of a sudden later it goes really fast yeah then it's like zoom time zoom and we're going we want to go fast in about 15 minutes so let's go fast now <laughs> we're thinking about going fast yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's all relative and the, and the more you watch these dives, the more you'll understand uh, how the ROV moves and, and what the requirements are and, and how that changes with depth. So the deeper you are, the slower it's going to be between moves and the shallower, the faster you'll feel those moves from the surface. And sort of like uh, walking your dog sort of suspended from a helicopter, your dog's down on the street. You have to do this whole whole dance. Mm -hmm. Aaron, do you have time for a navigations question? Uh, sure, yeah. Well, I guess it's kind of navigations, kind of Argus. Uh, when we ask the ship to move 100, or when we ask for a 100 meter move, does that mean that the ship above moves 100 meters and it drags the ROV along? Yeah, that's exactly what happens. Yeah, the we I we I only ask the ship to move, and Argus is attached to the ship and only has a little bit of of thrust. So really, it's where the ship goes. Argus goes, but it goes there eventually. Like it doesn't it takes a while. Um, it gets laid back pretty far in deep water, so it just means like it's it's trailing behind. So we're often waiting for Argus to to settle out where the ship is. But yep, that's that's it. But if you ever look at the kind of it, the black looking screen that we call ROV nav or ROV nav, um, and they, you see the blocks, um, they're 50 meter blocks. So you can start to see as the ship picks up momentum, um, Argus will start to, to lag behind. Um, and when it gets much beyond 100 meters, we get a little anxious sometimes and we, we hold it and wait for Argus to catch up. So uh, with that helicopter and dog walking example, it's kind of like we've got the helicopter, it's walking Argus dog, who's just like kind of a, a sluggish, you know, older, gentle dog. And then Argus dog is walk, watch, uh, walking Hercules dog, who's one of those like fast, energetic, like chihuahuas and just wants to run everywhere, right? Yeah, exactly. It's a really good visual. <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh, what's over here? Oh, what's over here? Which is how I feel half the time when I'm uh, watching these dives. I'm like, oh, what's that? Let's check it out. And now I have the Telecaster. I just point at things. 
I'm sad that we don't use the uh, go here function as often as we could. Look at this neat opportunistic rock. I love it. This is a great rock. That is a great rock. Surprise great this rock. This is the rock. No, we already had the rock. We also had the rock. So this is a rock. Just a rock. Maybe capital A rock. <laughs> what about capital R? Capital A, capital R. You're right. You're right. It's a nice looking stone. There are quite a few different types of corals on here. Yeah. We've got one of those teleopathies, a really large black coral. We've got some Aritogorgia, Magnus Pirellis. We've got some Pronoids. We've got Freid Sponge. Rodana Ritagorgia, Chrysogorgia coral. Um, Can you zoom in on the black coral, please? As I get over there. And there's bathopathies. Yeah, but these large teleopathies are really cool. This is the second one we've seen in this dive. We just saw one a little bit earlier. This one's uh, looking a little bit healthier. Right as branches are rising at right one angles. Zero zero meters two zero eight. Just keeps going and going. <laughs> like the energizer bunny of corals. Oh, 
one's very <laughs> confusing. Oh, yeah. That, <laughs> that was like a crazy screensaver. Yeah, that was... Hurt my eyes a little bit. Worth it. If you are just tuning in, we are rocking and rolling our way down a bit of a valley, uh, going from one um, summit to another on uh, unnamed Seamount G. It's going to take us a bit of time to work down this ridge to get to the next summit. We'll, we'll see what we see along the way. <laughs> 